Hello, Eclectic Raptor here. Today, I'm making the actual sewing machine cover. So I've got my back-to-back -back designs. I did manage to get a little more of that out, but it still looks hideous. I actually remember to put my label in. I've got it stuck there with basting, double-sided basting tape. Just so I couldn't forget. Because I always forget the label. But first, I have to have those little strips for latching it together. I'm not doing ties. I'm going to put Velcro on them. So I'm going to make one long tube of this, and then I'll do some top stitching after I've turned it. And then I'll trim it down to four pieces. Put my Velcro on the insides, and I will pin it in place inside of this before I sew it together. All of this will be sewn together once those straps are in place and I will leave an opening for turning it inside out. So that is our goal today and we'll start with the tube. I so barefooted let me get my <laughs> I had to get my foot flop off. Today it is 86 degrees outside. You'd never know it. They, I always do that. I reach for my foot and it's right here. All I have to do is hit the foot and it'll drop it. Anyhow, they turned the air on yesterday. It was a whole 82 degrees outside, but they had to get the house cooled down before today be, and it got too hot. So I am in long sleeves. Finally have a hot day and I'm in long sleeves and sweatpants. I will spend the rest of the summer this way. I just wear them year round. Our thermostat is set at 71. When I turn it up to 72 they go, Oh my God, it's so hot! Whatever. <laughs> I remember as a child in the 60s, no air conditioning. Every window in the house was open and you just laid on the floor like dead. Uh, and Ma'd come in and say, go outside, play. It's too hot. So you'd lay under the tree in the tall grass. You didn't mow your grass three times a week then either. Dad did it on Saturday. That was it. Saturday. There are so many different types of tools for turning tubes. Normally what I do is just sew off the end and then start pushing from this end with a chopstick, but I'm going to try. I spent the money on it years ago and I never think to use it. I always do my same old same old with a chopstick. Didn't cost me anything for that. Why do we buy all these tools? But you slide it all the way through first. And you catch it. See, it's got a little hook on the end. And this thing goes up like on a knitting machine. If you have ever seen a knitting machine. So you get that open. And you get it through a chunk of the fabric. Now you got to get it started. See, that's the part I always find the most difficult. Is getting it started. Once you get it started, it's real easy to get going, but came right back out. <laughs> of course, it's going to do this now. If I didn't have the camera on, it'd be done already. I'm going to get my stick. Ain't 
it came out. Forget this. This is called a bobkin. Has this little thing, this little tiny ring on here. So you slide it into your tube. You get the fabric. Let's do it where the seam is. It just is a thicker piece of fabric. Better grip. If I can get my fingers to work. Jeez, oh Pete. I've tried three different things because I can't get my fingers to bend the way I want them when I want them to. Nothing is working. Deep breaths. Frustration doesn't help. Deep breaths. There. <laughs> I use tweezers. So now it's tucked in. You see the little hole? So it's tucked into that bobkin. So I'm going to try and grab it with, and as I slide that reel up, that ring up, I will spit it out. Jeez. And then the idea is to just keep sliding it over. And I always think it's better to do it from the seam side. You can catch it up on this side, but the bulk of your slide needs to be on that one. So at least now it's finally working after all those near starts. I do wish I hadn't lost my favorite one. This does take a lot longer. The other way is basically, you know, like a straw on the inside and a stick on the outside and you just shove it through. Boom, it just keeps going and going. This, you got to keep maneuvering and wiggling and see how it's all bunched up there. So now you got to get that to loosen up without pulling it out. It does take longer. So I'll be back. We have the tube finally turned out. Boy, did that fight with me. I did go ahead and order another one of my favorite tube turners. Since that one disappeared. And it's probably in that missing box. I ever find that, I'm going to have double everything. My favorite tools. All my favorite tools. So what I did was, I it was one long strip that was actually a scrap from a quilt. And it had the salvage on either end, so that means it was all the way across the top, about 41 inches wide, 42 with the salvage. So I cut the salvage off, and then I, I cut a chunk. And these are... Each of these are nine inches long, so they'll they're, they'll be extra width, but because it's gonna, I'm planning for it to be about here. But I would rather have too much than not enough, because each one has to. Now we have to tuck the end, one end in. If you hear. You know, someone in the background is just my husband or one of my sons. It is a Saturday, so everyone is here. But I really want my cover, so I want to get it sewn. I'm trying to get this. There's a tiny little wrinkle there, and I'm just trying to work it out. That's why I keep messing with it. I'm weird that way. I'm just so particular. So I just tucked in a little bit, about a quarter of an inch or so. Because I made it extra long, it doesn't matter if I tuck extra. So if you're having a hard time, just tuck a little extra. But this, I find this the easiest way to get an, a small end in is to use some tweezers. And I just grab it and tuck it in. And then I can always pull it out a little bit if need be. So I, I've got that.
So I will get the rest of these tucked in. Just one end, because the other end is going to be sewn in the seam. And then we're going to top stitch all of this. I'm not going to bore you with my OCD antics here. Because I'll just keep messing with it and messing with it and messing with it. And you don't want to spend an hour watching me mess with something. I can't seem to help myself. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start at the open end. So at this end where I didn't tuck it in, that's the part that will be in the seam. Yes, I, I, this is a very old smartwatch from when I was working. Uh, my son has decided I am not getting enough exercise, which obviously I'm not. Oh. I'm trying to get used to the knee level lever. I have never used it. I've got three of them hanging off over here, which means... Well, probably one from my old machine that died. I don't know. Because I know the machines I sold, I gave the levers with. I never used them. So my foot, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get you a little closer. Now you see how it's got the clear here and then the metal you can see underneath these. I love this foot. And this is the standard foot for my machine. But I can go here. It's not a quarter inch. It's not a half, uh, not an eighth of an inch. It kind of lies in between, maybe three sixteenths. But it works for me. It gives me a, something to watch. And so I try to line up the edges with that. And that's what I love. So we're going to go ahead and get this stitched. Sorry, I felt a knot. At the end, I did go a little closer. See, I don't need a knee lever. This thing, you set a button, and it automatically, as soon as I touch the foot pedal, lower it. So why do I need that? Oh, well, the idea was is I was going to need it. My son wants a quilt out of green fabrics. And he did pick some out, and... I'm going to add to it because what he picked out there, there's just not enough of it. But I have got it all designed. Grab it up. I'm going to make sure. And I'm going to go ahead and just run them together. I always slow down for that simply because sometimes it catches it and pulls it down inside. I don't change my plate to a straight stitch plate. Because knowing me, I'll change it if I don't set up the alarm on this thing. It does have a something I can set up in it so that if it's got the straight stitch plate in it, it won't do a zigzag or anything. Only straight stitches. I just, I'm, I guess I'm old and set in my ways. I just don't bother. So I tried to set my earbuds up. I have these inexpensive earbuds. I only spent like 20 bucks on them or something. And they worked great, but they kind of started wearing out after only about six months. But I thought, you know, six months for 20 bucks, it wasn't a bad show. Anyhow, 
my husband needed a new phone. He has he always just uses my or my son's old phone. Oh, I don't need a new one. I don't need a new whatever. Well, Instead of him having to learn my phone, which is bigger than what he wanted, we went online and found him a phone because he was using an S7. And it just, the battery's not holding a charge anymore, you know, this kind of a thing. He, it was my old phone. So, I didn't even consider giving him my Note 9 because... Is sufficient for I don't work anymore. It's you know the only thing I do is play games on it for the most part. Text a lot of text, but I told him just get a new phone. He said I don't want it any bigger than the one I've got. Okay, easier said than done. <laughs> I'm trying a new tech. I'm going to talk instead of, you know, deleting it out and fast forwarding. Okay? We're going to see if people like that better. Because for some reason, people are, my average view is dropped down to three minutes. So, I'm sorry. I, if you don't like it, just let me know. All you have to do is leave a comment. Say, you know, we hate the sound of your voice. And you'll not hear it again. Anyways... So I get on the AT&T site and I find out that the older phones, because he keeps saying, oh, I don't need anything that expensive. I don't need anything that fancy. Yeah. Well, the older phones are actually bigger. The S22, not the Plus or the Ultra. Those are bigger. But the plain old S22 is a souped up monster. But, it's the same size as the S7. I mean, it's off by like a millimeter or two each way. So, just enough that you can't use the old case. That's alright. He has to have an otter box because he's always outside putting around or welding or something, you know. And he wanders off a lot, too. <laughs> <sighs> funny my younger son gets all worried have you seen dad you know he he might be 67 but he has survived 67 years i'm pretty sure he'll be okay they'll realize when they get to be in their 60s that 60s isn't so old seems so old when i was young anyways so we ordered him an s22 and when I put it in the cart, they gave me an offer on Samsung earbuds. And I could get the Pros or the Twos. And they were both half price, but the Twos were half the price of the Pros. And I jumped on, you know, I opened another browser and checked it out. And sure enough, people were saying that they liked the Twos better. They had... It had better they just I don't remember all the exact words they, but it had better reviews I went, cool so for 50 bucks I was able to get some Sang Sun earbuds and I love them they're very comfortable they work great I cannot get them to link with my new computer I don't know if they would have linked with Windows 10 any easier, but I have tried everything to get them to link up with the Bluetooth on this Windows 11 computer, and it just won't do it. I went, oh my, that's not cool. Linked up with my phone, really easy. Of course, it's a Samsung phone. And I don't know if it's a problem with the computer. I mean, it, it's, I bought an off-the-wall, my son kept saying, oh, no, they're good ones, they're good ones. It's an I buy power. And when I quit building computers, I always just got Hewlett Packard. They, For me, they always stood behind their product, but I didn't really have problems with them. I don't know. I don't know. 
So I've got all four of these done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Velcro on them. I've already got my little bits of Velcro here. This I actually had used it in costumes for my grandson and grandniece. And ow, 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 there's a cat tearing at me. Quit. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm back. I had to let the cat out. I didn't even know he was in here. I leave my closet door open now. I'm in and out so many times a day that it just made sense to just leave the door open. And it goes back up under the stairs and there's boxes stored up in there. And he just loves crawling way back through all the boxes. And he's got a little nesting spot he's made back there. But you don't even realize he's in here. And I had shut the door for filming. So I'll... if somebody goes stomping through the hallway, hopefully it won't come across. <laughs> So he was trapped in here. He clawed me. Didn't claw, but he reached up and just went, kind of gave a little, you know, I'm not even in camera. Ha! Huh, there we go. He gave a little, eh, to let me know, hey, I am here and I don't want to be. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the soft stuff on one side and the bumpy stuff on the other, right? And then, this end will go into the seams. We just have to make sure we've got the right sides together. And the, I will measure the distance I want, and I will seam it from that. Leaving a little gap. You want to make sure it's loose enough. Plus, if you haven't pre-washed your fabric, you wash that cover... It's going to shrink. This is all cotton fabric. It will shrink. So now we're, I'm just going to drop this down. I'm going to lengthen my stitch to a three and a half. Oops, still got some threads. Oh, that's what I started to tell you. These, I had put them on straps on the costumes. And then it did, it just, I didn't like the way it fit. So I took them all off, and I saved the little pieces. I thought, well, someday I'll use them again. And I used snaps, I believe it was, instead. I made turtle costumes for them. As a matter of fact, I made a series on it, the making of it. Oh, that took forever. But... It happened. And then I didn't have them. You know, they don't live here. So when I made my sons <coughs> in the 90s, uh, when was that? Early 90s. We were still living in the other place. So it was before 93. We moved in here in 93. Anyways, I had them. And I did my sewing at night. But if I needed to fit something to them, just did it after they had breakfast and had it all ready for when they went to sleep. I could sew some more on it. Still took me. I made one for each of them. Well, those two, my two sons, and one for my nephew. And it took me a month. But the younger one... Alex was three, so it was a 92. Now to me, 92 doesn't seem like it was that long ago. And hopefully to some of you, it <laughs> doesn't seem like it was that long ago. right okay so now if you fit them together 
and put them and then pin them in each side you're more apt to make sure you don't make that mistake and I want the fuzzy side coming from the front but we'll do that when we get to it this is non-adhesive velcro when I I used to you know buy the adhesive kind because I'm thinking ooh I'll just stick it on yeah it doesn't stay so then I would try to sew it with the sewing machine it would gum up my needle and that would be the end of that the problem with that kind of a thing too far is when that needle comes up too much it could bend it could nick your plate did that on my Janome yeah a hundred and fifty dollars later <laughs> I had that back and then I just sold it it was so heavy fantastic machine still miss it to this day because I, I used to joke I could, you could drive through a car with it drive through a car you could sew through a car with it because the thing was so powerful but I sew in this tiny little spot and I slide my machine backwards and after I hurt my back it was just so hard on me sliding it and pulling it forward because the thing weighed what was it 27 pounds and it's, it was more the angle than anything um, so I sold it. Mom got a great deal from me too. <laughs> she loved it. And then when I'd find things, you know, feed or whatever that I had bought for it and put someplace else and forgot about them, I contacted her twice. Said, hey, I found this or that. Would you like it? I had forgotten I had bought an extension table for that machine. And it was packed away. So when I found it, I contacted her and said, Hey, I've got an extension table I found in my storage for that. Would you like it? Oh, boy, she was down after work. <laughs> she said she was loving that machine. She was so glad she bought it. So even though I sold it really cheap, I'm glad it went to someone that is enjoying it so much, not someone that is just going to turn around sell it again for a profit I don't have a pro I used it for I don't five or six years I'd made many quilts on that thing and I do now that we've got our velcro in we need to move over to the table so that we can get everything pinned into place now before we know how long we want those straps to be we need to know how wide this machine is so when I use a hard ruler it comes to eight and a half inches and then they're gonna overlap so I'm gonna go with 10 inch combined so we're gonna turn around to the table and we're gonna figure this out So now we have our straps, and when I overlap them, and I measure them, you see how far it, it comes past? But I only want 10 inches total. Sorry, there's the seam. I only want 11 inches total. I would rather it was too big than too small. You can always adjust and you can always pick that Velcro out and move it too. But if it shrinks in the washer and dryer, I want it to still fit over my machine. So I'm going to find the center point, which would be five and a half. And I'm going to put that about halfway through that Velcro there. So that means that 
that stops there and then if I turn it around and I go five and a half inches here that stops there now if you want to make it real easy after you trim those down at this point you can just grab these and measure it off of that just put them together and trim alright so let's get that done now these are marked purpose multi-purpose and the reason I wrote that on there is because they get used for everything, but I don't want them grabbing my others. So if you they come back and they look at the handles, they'll know they can use these. So I'm going to go in, cut a little piece off. I'm going to save this because I, I also make bags and stuff. I do need to develop my pattern. I had started it before the whole new flooring debacle and I have I have no idea what happened to my pattern I was creating. My sister-in-law gave me all this and it's actually upholstery leather so it's quite pliable. It's nice. It is actually very nice. I can sew it on my machines. I don't need an industrial machine for it. I love that. And she gave me a couple of boxes of it. The only thing she requested was that I make her a crossbody bag out of some of it. And she wanted it bigger than the one I had made her before. I actually made her a couple of them. And from a embroidery machine pattern I had bought. Love it. It's great, but it do, it is a little small, so she uses this for work, so that she's always got her stuff with her. It's on her. She just slides it behind her. She works in a help center for a very large manufacturing company, and she's really good at her job. She's so good with people. But she's also diabetic, and I imagine she wanted the bigger purse so that she could keep things on her that she might need. But I, I still haven't made it. So I have to first make sure my pattern will work out, and I will make it, it out of fabric or vinyl or whatever. And I could possibly use these for all my D-rings because I make it so that if you want to take off the long strap and put on say just a, a wrist strap you can and I will make her a separate wrist strap to go with it. I love them. I, I've got a few. I really only use them in the summer. But that's because in the winter you got coats on with well I live in Michigan you got coats on, and I get coats with a lot of pockets, and I, I quit carrying a purse. Wow, I guess it's almost 20 years ago now. And it really helped. I used to have to go to the chiropractor for horrible headaches. Uh, I'm not saying I don't get headaches anymore. Of course I still get headaches. But not like I used to. Oh, nothing like I used to. I carry these huge shoulder bags. Everything you could want was in it. Used them for diaper bags. <laughs> they were so big. And it pulls on your neck and I would get migraines. Alright, I had already marked this because I had filmed it and then realized, oops, I forgot something. So I had to start it over again. I'm not going to erase the marks. Instead, I'm going to show you what I had done. I already showed you how I measured the machine. And I had come to the conclusion that I wanted my straps, well, before they're stitched in, that I, with the seams, I've got 11 and a half inches on that one. Hmm. Yes, 11 and a half inches on each of them. 
you want a little extra play and then I had already measured from the table up on the machine as to how far up I wanted the strap to be and I go from my seam I want seven and a half this is cut a little cockeyed so I actually went by the under layer and I did that on all the corners up now this is the outside section right and this is the back of the machine and that's the front on the back of the machine I want the loopy tape and when it comes out this is going to get turned out um, my brain doesn't wrap around things like other people's I don't think because I can sit here and look at this and I'm not going to get it wait a minute it needs to go which way I have to literally sit here and go alright if this is the inside and it's coming off of that it's here but when it's being sewn down it's like this and that's how I have to figure it out I know it sounds weird so when it comes out this is the loopy part the ca catching part and I wanted that underneath so it needs to face down here I'll lay it over my little line try and center it as much as possible and then I'm gonna pin through all of it but that means now I need this side so now I've got to remember figure out how that one's gonna go now if this one is facing down then this one logically speaking should be facing up I've got now that's actually taped into place I didn't want to forget to put it in I always forget to put my label on and even though it's just for me and it doesn't matter I'm trying to curb bad habits so my mark is on the outside I'll find my mark make sure that my fuzzy part it's going to catch is up. That's not right. That is not right. That can't possibly be right. When this is sewn, this is going to come off. Okay. So that one is down. If it comes off and you want it looping over, it's down so why didn't oh we're gonna verify again I told you my brain doesn't work right <laughs> let's get all of this so I've got that one pinned into place once I figure it out I'll be set so If I take it and I kind of flip these like that, this is going to go like this and this is going to go like this. See, now that's not right. So this one I put in upside down. Holy moly, I'm so glad that I checked that. For me, double checking isn't enough. You had to triple check. So, for the way I want it, hook side is facing the outside piece. Soft side is facing the inside piece. All right, I'm gonna do that again on this side. If I mess this all up, I swear I'm not making it again. <laughs> Just not gonna do it. I'm not padding this either. Come on, lay back down, shake it. I've shifted it around so much it doesn't want to lay flat anymore. 
All right. Now, what did I just say? On the front, it faces down. This is the soft side. Find my mark. There's my mark. It's facing the back, the inside cover. And on this end, it'll face up or the outside cover. Hey, my thread came out. Son of a gun. I'll sew it afterwards. I don't know how I did that. Having a day today, aren't we? I'm going to just keep on plugging away. You guys just get to see it in all its glory. All right. You see all my boo-boos this time. Unless I cut them all out, huh? All right, so I've got my label in. I've got my straps in. You do have to leave a gap. So, I'm going to take this. And this is for turning. To turn it inside out. And I'm going to put those two clips there to remind myself. Leave a gap. And I'm just... I just want it big enough for my hand just so it's easier to get it in and out okay and that's it doesn't have to be that big if you like it smaller a little bit bigger works great you don't want it too big because then you have a hard time if you have it close enough you can flip this inside out and that seam will pull the fabric in and it's easier to make sure it's the same and you know you don't have waivers and all that all right so now we're gonna sew it all along its outside edge it seems a lot longer than it is if I was doing this without a camera shining it would have only have taken me about after the stitch out to do all the sewing together part and even with my boo-boos in this probably 20 minutes and that's mostly because I had to measure the machine and then come back and measure this it is not a long project you can put batting in here if you want it heavier or thicker you know have it more body or you could just do an iron on on all of one fabric or both personally I wanted it to drape and hug the machine a little more I do have cats and they crawl across my machine so we're going to go back to the sewing machine now. Okay. So now we're just going to sew around it. If I could see my lines. Okay. If you have bad eyes and, you know, aren't smart enough to grab your glasses like, whew, I don't know, me. <laughs> Close enough. That little line right there. Close enough. I used to sew over my needles I would just slow down to go over them but then if you do hit the needle it will bend your sewing machine needle and you gotta stop and change it all of which is not a big deal you should probably change it every project anyways but in that lost box I was like two Oh, well, I would bet 250 needles, three different sizes, uh, organ needles. I buy, bought them in packs of, a, they were actually 10 to a pack, but 10 packs, 100 of them for the price. And it was a great price until I lost them. I have other needles because every time you buy something for your sewing machine or buy a sewing machine or, you know, whatever, they throw in free needles.
And I'm here to tell you, I buy a lot of junk. And, of course, all the times that I have... Oh, you know what? No, that's fine. That's fine. I worked at Myers a long time ago. And they were doing a complete reset. Well, they were doing a remodel of the whole store. Something they've been doing lately. You can find the best deals, man. Myers will just 90% off to get rid of it and then bring it back. <laughs> but I got luggage for every member of our family. And I only spent like $200 on four sets of luggage. Because they reduced them down so much, they were eliminating the luggage. The sets. These were full sets. Yeah, they were top of the line. We don't need top of the line. We don't take vacations. And I still, mine was still in good shape. My husband started traveling for work and ruined his. He said that one of our sons took some of them. I loaned him one that was the ideal size for flight. And then, of course, they changed that. So I loaned him a, a different suitcase that would still fall in the guidelines. He keeps them. <laughs> Once you loan them, they're, they're his. <laughs> Mine, like a two-year-old. Mine. Now I know a lot of people like the, you know, the need for speed kind of a thing when they're sewing. This sewing machine will go quite fast. You, for precision, you're going to slow down anyways. So, unless you're just, like, if you're making scrunchies or something, you're just going, yang, 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 and it doesn't matter, precision is not a big deal, that kind of a thing. Then I guess you'd want the speed. But I find that if I'm trying to be a little more accurate, say, in my seam allowances or whatever... I'm not going real fast anyways. I don't pin. If you have everything pinned together, then I guess you could go faster, but you're going to constantly be having to stop anyways to pull all the pins out. So, <laughs> I had a sewing teacher in high school. She failed me. I'd been sewing since I was eight years old, and she failed me. She didn't like me. I don't know what to tell you. I was a smart aleck. I took after my dad. I also didn't take a lot of bull when this was in the 70s when the adults were trying to get the kid, young people to understand that they were the ones that had the power and the young people were saying, yeah, bite me. I imagine it's still pretty much like that, but I not young people no more, so I don't know. I know I got over my attitude when I became the adult. But anyhow, yeah, I was an obnoxious teenager, and she failed me. And one of her points was, because I didn't use pens. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I had to get I had to get a passing grade. They didn't allow you to not have a passing grade. And this was in actually it was junior high, not high school. Junior high. So I tried to get my stepmother to help me if I had an adult sitting there telling me what to do I could do it at home and she would give me a passing grade well yeah she knew my parents were alcoholics and not gonna help me that was her way of not having to pass me 
Oh, she wasn't a very nice woman. But anyhow, my boyfriend's mom was a teacher and she made arrangements with her, happened to be her best friend, that she would help me. I mean, really, I went over to her house and she made me read the pattern instructions to her and I remember sitting at the sewing machine at home doing it all alone so she still didn't like it I remember those they were called elephant leg pants and that was the style that would have been 73 74 I, I only know this by the grade I was in what approximate year it should have been She barely passed me. All I kept thinking is, I've been sewing probably as long as you. <laughs> and you found me. Whatever. I'm not saying I was perfect at sewing at, you know, 13, 14 years old. Absolutely not. I'm not perfect at sewing now. If I turn this inside out and those don't meet up in the right way, I'm going to just be so upset. <laughs> <laughs> if you get this is the tiny little this is a skewer I keep a packet of these in the back room for things don't use the pointed end because it's too pointed and it could tear your fabric and I don't care if that point is completely out if you want it more so I would suggest say uh, an aluminum knitting needle because the tip is rounded and it'll help protect the fabric but it'll get that allow you to give a harder push you know a little more oomph to it and you make sure you cut across and actually if you cut if you really want a good point cut a round and close but not too close you gotta have at least I would say two millimeters of fabric uh, if you're like I cut straight across so my corners aren't as crisp but come on that's a pretty good point that's good enough oh my goodness I have an itchy spot I cannot reach it and it's driving me nuts okay I haven't done my top stitching yet I will iron it and top stitch it. But I want to check. Let's see. Did I do it right? All right. So, there's my little picture. Oh, oh. I always have to wet my fingers to get it, the edges to slide out. That's my. There we go. Woo! Just to the edge. And I measure something. <gasps> I didn't do my label right. <sighs> I told you I always do something wrong. Wow. There's a lot of extra gap there. I was measuring here. Duh. And I can tighten it up a little bit like that if I want. But at least I did get it in the right spots. See, that end, it, the opposite end is wider. That's where, you know, your motor and everything is. This end is wide open. All right. I can't believe I did that. I forgot about making sure it was out far enough when I put this on. Well, I almost put a label on something I made. I'm sure right now your confidence has just dropped in me completely. I'm going to iron this in place. I will be back. All ironed and ready to be top stitched. Uh, new wheels are going to be here. Um, I think tomorrow, but I could be mistaken. The wheels on this 
chair. It's funny, when you don't want it to, it'll just roll away when you're trying to sit down. But once you're in the chair, the wheels kind of drag and I don't want to scratch my floor all up. So, I've ordered new wheels. Made more sense than get a whole new chair. This chair actually works out quite well for me. For sewing on. There's nothing wrong other than the wheels are all, um, they're just don't want to roll well and my husband said that he would clean them up and that'd be fine. My son found a set of five for, what, what? Oh, come on, really? I'm almost out of bobbin thread. I'm going to run out before I get all the way around. You watch and see. This project is really big. <laughs> it's too funny about that label. I can just see the tops of the little birds. <laughs> oh, well. With my machine, if I hit that button, say, yep, it's out. Acknowledging that the bobbin is low, it'll just keep going off. And usually, there's still lots of thread left on it, but this one, so as I'm digging to, going to get my bobbin out, this is what I was talking about. I had started to tell you and then something else happened while I was sewing and didn't finish what I was saying. So they had reduced, well that one's actually Walmart, don't ask me why I got that, but you can see they reduced it down to 70 cents from $2.99 at the time of that reset, that remodel. And so I grabbed needles up. The great thing about, I only used one when I first got my embroidery machine we had what they were Yahoo groups and that's how you know you would talk to other people to find for experience how do I do this how do I do that that kind of thing and they were all recommending that we use organ needles so I hopped on and bought organ needles up the Wahoo. And that's all I've used in all my machines. Because that's what I had. I had so many of them. Now, recently, I ordered some smelts to test. Okay, go away. And I will most definitely have to use those because all my organ needles, there was a pack. You know, I whatever I'm using, I'll throw the pack down inside here because it goes down farther than your spool does so that I know what size needle I have in. So I had that pack, and I had the one in my embroidery machine and I had two in an oddball spot so those I've still got and then all of these numerous Singer and the smelts that I had bought to test them out and I did try them it's a needle I used it in the embroidery machine um, it seemed just fine. I don't know that it was any different than if you're doing hand sewing, you can feel the needle give that kind of thing. You would be able to tell the quality real fast that way. But when I the machine is the only thing feeling that needle, so unless it's a brittle needle or easily bent, that kind of 
of a pro issue. It just seems like a sewing needle. I don't wait until it's refusing to go through the fabric before I change my needles. I try to change out my needle uh, before a big project or, you know, multiple after, you know, four or five small projects. This needle seems like it's been in a long time, but it actually hasn't sewn very much. I've done a couple of videos because it had a bigger needle in it. This particular needle has only done, this is the third project, and none of them were very large projects, so. That needle is just fine. And now, turn it off. Like I said, this, machine is much fatter on the opposite end and if you pat it you know it'll give you a more rounded edge and all that I wasn't too worried about ha oops missed one I really would just want to play with that embroidery machine and cover this one up it was fun to make and it's pretty isn't it now don't forget if you didn't watch it you might want to if you have an embroidery machine and really like this this design is from designs by juju it is a mug rug and this i did the mug rug to test it out and then for this i eliminated the the background I just jumped ahead until it showed in the stitch down for the body of the sewing machine. That was the first part it did. And then you eliminate the very last stitching, which is where it's going to stitch it down for the cover. Nowadays, it seems to be very popular to have these giant mug rugs, but they take up too much space. As it is, this one sits over here like this. So I did create one of my own that's just a square and I can use deco fabrics in the center. Doesn't have all the different, you don't have to go through a lot of, As a matter of fact there's no color changes if you don't want there to be. Use the same thread through the whole thing. And you might want to look at that one if you have an embroidery machine. That is actually a free download from my blog. So you heard it here, but you have to go to that, to that video to get to the design. It's not hard. Just open it up and go to the description, click on it. And if it's not the most recent, all you have to do is do a search. Mug rug. I literally called it Simple Square Mug Rug. But it's free download on my blog. It'll do, you can do a 4x4 four four, or you can do a 5x7, uh, you know, which is it's like 4.5x4.5 four four or something. It comes out. I like a smaller coaster. Not too small, but a smaller coaster. So you'll check that one out too. Thank you for joining me in my little project. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.